The Long Bright was commissioned by David Wallman, who uh, wrote these amazing poems as he was witnessing the, the passing of his wife from her diagnosis to her death from breast cancer. And he wanted to create an event that would raise money for breast cancer research in her honor, Annie Baker's honor. And I had the, the pleasure and, and the great honor of knowing Annie Baker at, uh, near the end of her life. She was just an amazing, radiant woman who loved music, loved life, and great musician, beautiful soprano um, who sang art music and Broadway and opera and was a great lover of music of all kinds, especially new music. And so in order to really prepare myself to write this piece, I'd asked David Woolman um, for recordings of her singing, which I listened to, music that she had actually composed, and music that she loved, lists of her recital programs. Um, and some of that music is actually heard in fragments in the work itself. This was a very challenging uh, project for me, as you can well understand, writing a piece about breast cancer uh, to the words of a man who's lost his wife to breast cancer. And um, I began with um, interviewing a lot of breast cancer survivors and talking to them about their experience. I read books about death and dying, um, both from the Eastern and Western perspectives. Um, I looked at a lot of books of artwork done by breast cancer survivors and how they were expressing uh, what they had been through through art. So there was a, a period of maybe six to eight months of just research and uh, finding a way in to be able to create a world of healing through this piece. When I started to write this piece, I was in Germany at the time touring with a dance company and I took David's poems with me to work with because when I write a vocal piece, I always start with the words. They, they're really the, the force behind all of the music. And so this line from his poem, The Long Bright, Do Not Fear the View, was really just in my mind like a mantra. And so I sat down at the piano in uh, Dresden and I came up with this theme. Do not fear the and I thought, how can that be? It's so simple. How could this possibly turn into an hour-long piece? And I kept trying to disregard it. But the theme came back, and it kept coming back in my subconscious, in my dreams. I kept singing it over and over, and I thought, this theme wants to be there. And the uncanny thing about it is that this little theme, actually, if you were to graph it on a piece of music paper, do not fear the view, it would look like this, which some of you may see looks a little bit like a sine wave. Right? And if you were to take its inversion, or to put it upside down musically, um, it would look like this. And if you put the two together, you get a figure eight, which is really about infinity. And so, to me, that was a sign that musically this piece was on the right path. When David Bowman commissioned the piece, he asked me to think about the kind of instrumentation and vocal forces that would be appropriate for this work. And uh, I decided on soprano and treble choir and orchestra. The idea of treble choir being an intergenerational choir or a girls' choir where women could not only learn the music but also become aware of breast cancer through the process of learning this music and, um, and be a vehicle for communicating breast cancer awareness and healing. So when I begin a big work, um, and this is a big work, almost an hour long, I, I think about the form and also the fact that there needs to be a dramatic trajectory, that the piece needs to express a lot of different emotions. And in this particular work, because we're dealing with um, you know, the subject of life and death, it really does go from a sense of loss, terror, um, you know, not trying to comprehend to a place ultimately of acceptance and transformation. And so in order to be able to um, communicate these feelings in music, I use various musical styles. So you'll hear everything from uh, romantic contemporary sounds to more rap, hip hop, vernacular sounds that involve the chorus in different ways, ex ways of expressing anger and energy and um, you'll hear opera, uh, various fragments of pieces that Annie Baker loved to sing from the opera and the art song repertoire. You'll also hear a piece that is a nod to musical theater because she loved to sing Broadway. 
Um, so it really encompasses a very wide variety of musical styles. The premiere of The Long Bright happened in April 2004 at the Kimmel Center in Philadelphia with Grammy award-winning soprano Gila Plitman, the Temple University Music Prep Children's Choir, and Orchestra 2001. And the concert benefited the Breast Cancer Research Center in, at the University of Pennsylvania. The piece was received very well. The concert was sold out and um, it got a standing ovation. And, uh, we were quite pleased, I think, with, with the reaction, but also with the, the monetary benefits as well. We raised over $40,000 for breast cancer research. I'm really excited about coming to LA to uh, hear the West Coast premiere of this work with the Los Angeles Jewish Symphony, a wonderful orchestra led by my dear friend, Noreen Green, who's premiered several of my pieces, and also working with Hila Plitman again, and I think that because the piece was premiered by a children's choir, and now we're having the chance to perform it with an intergenerational women's choir, I feel that there is going to be a deepening of the text uh, with this Kol Isha choir. And uh, Hila Plitman, I, I had the honor of, uh, great pleasure of working with her in a, another oratorio that was performed by, premiered by the Los Angeles Jewish Symphony, and Hila was the soloist, and so uh, I was thrilled that she could uh, be the soloist in this piece as well. As well. She's really a, a dream to work with in every way. We're also very excited that Mandy Woolman, who's the daughter of Annie Baker and David Woolman, will be coming out from Philadelphia to perform as violin soloist in this evening of music. Uh, she's a beautiful young woman and um, I think that it'll be very moving to have her uh, perform in commemoration of her mother and those who have died from breast cancer. I also think that it's, it's really significant that the piece is benefiting the Israel Cancer Research Fund. I think this piece is an emotional journey and it's about the cycle of life. And I think that everybody can relate to it in one way or another. And it, it hopefully will move you and take you to new places that feel familiar in yourselves and maybe even take you to new places where you're, you're stimulated, you're, um, you're transformed in some way. I, mean, I think that's really the, the goal and, and the essence of the piece and of music itself.